Hey guys, welcome back to another video. My name is Caroline. I'm a first year medical student at Columbia Medical School and today I thought it would be the perfect time to tell you about the med school personal statement. So first I'll explain what exactly the med school personal statement is and then I'll get into some tips on how I approached writing the essay. I'll also get into the timeline of when you should be thinking about doing what, also getting feedback on the essay, and then lastly, I'll get into things I wish I had done differently during this entire essay crafting process. But before then, I'd like to take a minute to thank our sponsor for today, BetterHelp. BetterHelp is a platform that aims to make therapy more accessible by connecting you to a network of over 25,000 licensed and experienced therapists. It's 100% online, and to get started, you just need to answer a few questions about your needs and preferences so BetterHelp can match you to the right fit. The pre-med journey is never easy, and it can be especially stressful when it's application season and you're always trying to put your best foot forward. And once you're in med school and eventually in a career as a doctor, we often forget that those who care for others need to be cared for themselves. With BetterHelp, you can find someone to talk to and work through whatever you might be going through, however you feel comfortable, whether it's via text, chat, video call, or phone call. If you find it's not the right fit for you at first, you can change to a new therapist at no extra charge. By partnering with me today, they're giving you 10% off your first month of therapy at betterhelp.com slash caroline chen. That's betterhelp.com slash caroline chen. And I've also included the link in the description. Clicking the link really helps the channel and hopefully it will set you on a path of taking charge of your mental well-being. Thank you so much to BetterHelp and to you guys, my lovely subscribers for always supporting me. And let's dive back into the video. So what exactly is the med school personal statement? Logistically, it's 5,300 characters and that translates to around one page of single spaced writing. It's pretty open-ended in terms of content, meaning that you can write about whatever experiences that brought you into medicine that sort of led you to this moment of thinking about applying to medical school. It's your chance to be a storyteller. It's your chance to tell the admissions committees why you are actually like in this moment watching this video, why you're going to be in a few months submitting your AMCAS application. So think about your personal statement as a sort of cover letter for your application. Your application would include MCAT, grades, work and activities and descriptions of those, recommendations, etc. But think of this as your moment to sort of tie everything together and present a story about yourself. But Caroline, what if my story is literally so unoriginal and I just love science and helping people? Fear not because 99% of other pre-meds are thinking the same thing. I've learned that it's actually okay to be not that original. You can try to be as special as you can be, but you don't have to be original to be good. And it's actually really hard to be original. And so there really is no such thing as originality. There's only such thing as unique storytellers. Even if two best friends or two siblings have gone through the same experiences and had the same motive for applying into medicine, they're two different people. And so inherently, there will be two different stories out of that. So if the fear is that you won't be original enough, which is something that I was thinking about when I was applying, just let that go because once you get out of this mindset that it has to be 100% original, you can actually get the ball moving and start brainstorming experiences that you've had, but other people probably have had too. And it can still make for a great application essay. And some people have a spark moment, which is when, for example, they go through something with a loved one or they see a patient and that patient really impacted them. And that's why they wanted to be a doctor. But I think for a lot of people, their interest in medicine sort of was explored and was solidified over the years. And so personally for me, it was not one single experience, but it was a combination of life experiences that eventually led me to apply to medical school. So just be honest with yourself, be honest with your story, and the admissions committees will understand because they are doctors, they are people who have gone through this entire pre-med journey, med school journey, and doctorate journey to be where they are. And now I wanted to share some tips on how to choose what to write in your personal statement. You sort of want to stray away from talking too much about experiences that are present elsewhere in your application. So for example, you're allowed three most meaningful activities, experiences to write about in your work and activities section. And if you already wrote about being a TA as one of your most meaningful experiences, 
maybe you want to write about a different experience in that personal statement because you already had room to write about the other one somewhere else. And it's really not what experience do I write about? It's more of what story can this experience share about me? So you really want to show the med school admissions committee that you have the competencies that they're looking for. And I'll get into that a little bit later. I wanted to mention before then that you want to try to avoid smushing too much in. So me, when I write, I have this issue of wanting to put every single thing in when I was writing for college essays and it was like, there, I was trying to make a claim. I wanted to put like every single piece of information in that essay to support my claim. And uh, yeah, a lot of the times you really just want to include the most relevant, the most pertinent, because if you just keep stuffing information in, it's not gonna be very cohesive. Because the med school statement is only a page long, single spaced, it seems like a lot at first when you have nothing on the page, but once you have something on the page, it's like, okay, I wanna actually keep elaborating, keep writing, because there's so much to talk about and so much to unpack. So my recommendation for this is just stick with one story or two stories if you think that they are connected well enough, because readers can tell when your writing is sort of forced together if you have two different stories and you're trying to put them together whereas if you just have one like flowing story that could work um and a more like generalized lesson take away after that so now that we've got that covered i wanted to go back to the competencies that i was talking about the amc has a list of competencies they think that every doctor should have first we have the interpersonal competencies so between people and that's service orientation social skills cultural competence teamwork and oral communication and then they have the intrapersonal competencies and these are more inherent characteristics that you have or that you can develop and that is ethical responsibility to self and others reliability and dependability, resilience and adaptive, adaptability, and capacity for improvement. And there are also other thinking and reasoning competencies and also science competencies. And I think the most relevant in this case for your statement would be thinking about the interpersonal and the intrapersonal ones. When I was brainstorming ideas of what to write, like what moments are significant enough I listed out the different categories of interpersonal and intrapersonal competencies and I would bullet ideas for memories or experiences I had that reflected social skills, that reflected teamwork skills, that reflected my um, orientation for service or my ability to improve. You don't have to fill out every single bullet for sure, but try to find an experience that sort of covers a lot of ground in that sense and that could be a good starting place. And these experiences don't have to be only medically or clinically related. If you had a really good time volunteering in a neighborhood park, picking up litter, that could be a good intro or that could actually set the scene for like your current orientation towards community service now. It can be anything. It can be something that showcases your strengths and sort of relate your strengths to why you would be good in medicine. And that's another tip too. If you are having trouble coming up with something completely original, such as like the reasons you want to go into medicine, try to think instead about what can I bring to the medical field that someone else might not be able to. By reframing it from why do I want to do medicine, think about what can I do for medicine. Sometimes that can help. So some guiding questions just to keep in the back of your mind. Why did I choose to be pre-med and why am I choosing now to apply to medical school? What motivates me to learn every day? And what motivates me to volunteer in the hospital that I volunteer at? What motivates me to go help patients in the way that I do? What do I want med schools to know about me that I can't really include anywhere else in my application or isn't exactly explicit anywhere else in my application? And how you write can be just as important as what you say. And so now that you have an idea of the stories you want to include in your personal statement, think about how you want to tell it. So when you're writing a personal statement for the admissions committee, you want to make sure that you're keeping them engaged throughout the entire essay. You don't want them to be like, okay, yeah, this is another one of those and I just, I know what they're going to say already. You really want to start off with a scene. There's a lot of different ways you can set the scene and you really just want to provide some imagery that will help capture your audience's attention. And then as you keep writing, you can relate it back to why you want to do medicine, why you're interested in medicine. It's sort of like a show and then tell. 
you engage them, and then you sort of deliver the final message. Because admissions committees are really busy and they have so many essays to read, you want to be as nice to them as possible and just tell them what you want them to take away from it. That's the way that I was trying to approach it. This is also not prescriptive, but I like to include a sort of wrap up or take home paragraph at the end of my essay to just make sure that the admissions committees are sort of catching what I'm throwing at them. So that is a strategy that you can use too. And with the bullets and with this sort of like structuring of the essay, it can sound formulaic, but don't use it as like a specific formula. Think of it as more of an organization box. These bullets are how I'm gonna organize what I'm gonna potentially write about, the stories that I'm gonna choose, and this sort of strategy is how I'm gonna organize my essay. But it really is a personal statement, and so whatever works for you personally, go for it. And because you only have a limited space to write this in, try not to make the essay too abstract or try not to make the ideas so theoretical that it's really hard to pin down what exactly you're trying to say. Choose stories that are bounded in space and time because that will help you to hone in on the skills and the characteristics of yourself that you're trying to convey to the admissions committee. Okay, and now for timeline. So I started thinking about writing the essay around this time. It was around mid to late March. And then I really started working on it from like throughout April, May, and then June. So the application actually opened in May, but I didn't submit until June. And I can talk a little bit more about the timeline if you guys are interested in that in another video. Just let me know in the comments below. It's not really a one and done essay. I think there are a lot of different iterations of it you can go through before you finalize it. Personally, I wrote around nine to 10 drafts, which can sound like a lot initially when I heard that you had to do multiple, multiple drafts of it. I was like, oh my gosh, how am I, how am I gonna have the time to do this? But actually, once you get your first draft, which may or may not be a good draft. It's okay if it's not. I don't think mine was the best draft. Um, you can get feedback on it from yourself when you read it and change some things. You can also ask other people for feedback. And feedback is actually probably a, like a very big part of this process of writing in general, because sometimes things make sense to yourself, but they don't make sense to other people who are reading them. A lot of the times the best writers get feedback from their close friends, their family, their other writer friends and so if you have anyone that you think could have a good eye for writing you might consider asking them for their opinion on your essay and if your school has a writing center i know that in my undergrad there was this writing center where students could just book appointments for free it might be worth checking that out you can go from okay this is what i want my reader to get from it to okay this is what my reader actually got from it and i need to change this and this and improve on this to help the point get across. And when you are asking for feedback, it's helpful to not just say, okay, can you read this and give me feedback? And they may just be like, okay, yeah, it's really good. It can be helpful or more helpful for you to ask targeted questions. So you could be like, okay, the way that I'm phrasing this, how does that make you feel? Or is the intro capturing your attention? And then your feedback givers can give more targeted feedback and you can actually work with that. Okay, so that was a lot of information and I hope that you took a lot from it. And I wanted to end off the video by just sharing what I wish I could have done differently. I think the number one thing is that I wish I trusted myself more. I am the type of person who really likes receiving constructive feedback on my work because I want it to be absolutely perfect. But the thing is, there's no such thing as perfection. You can be satisfied with something, but it's not necessarily perfect. And so just throughout the writing journey, throughout the med school application process, I learned that it doesn't have to be perfect to be good. And it doesn't have to be perfect to be great or exceptional. Try to not trust yourself out too much. Think about it as a work in progress. And then eventually you're going to submit that work in progress because it's going to be satisfactory enough or it's going to make you happy enough and proud enough that you're going to be like, okay, I can submit this and this is my best foot forward. I'd also tell myself to limit the number of people I asked feedback from because if you get feedback from too many people, obviously people are different. They're going to have contrasting ideas. And so some people are going to be like, oh yeah, I, I think you should probably change this part because it sounds a little weird or the phrasing is a little funky, but someone else would be like, oh no, I, I like it. Keep it that way. And so you're going to have this like internal conflict of who should I listen to? Um, do I even like the way that I wrote that? I thought I liked it, but someone says I should change it. 
So just go with your gut and go with what makes you happy because at the end of the day, I'm gonna say this again, it's a personal statement. It is personal and I think the person who should be most happy with it is you. So don't change things just because other people say you should change things. Go with your gut and send it off. And yeah, so that is gonna be a wrap for today's video. I hope you took a lot from it and you learned a lot from it and you can start on this process of writing your med school personal statement and drafting it and editing it and getting feedback on it and you're gonna do great. It's, it's gonna seem like a lot at times, but it's okay because your fellow applicants are feeling the same way. Maybe doctors in your lives who have gone through this have felt the same way and you're gonna make it through. And if you have any other questions, feel free to drop them in the comments down below. And don't forget to subscribe while you're at it. Oh, that reminds me, I think I wanna make a video on how to approach the secondary applications. That is a different beast in and of itself. So if you're interested in that, make sure to hit the thumbs up so I know and comment any other ideas that you'd like to see on this channel. If you're interested in how I studied for the MCAT, I'm gonna link my video here that I made. And if you're interested in how I'm doing in med school, I'm gonna link the vlogs that I've been making over here. Thank you guys so much again for watching. I really appreciate your continued love and support, and I wish you all the best. You can do this. Goodbye. Mwah. It's okay. We got this. <laughs>